Aloha, welcome to Science Never Sleeps. My name is Hadley Anderson. I'm one of the science educators over here at the Bishop Museum. And with me today is Dr. Noreen Young. She's our malacology researcher. And uh, what, so let's get one thing straight. What is malacology? Let's start with it. Malacology is the study of mollusks. Mm -hmm. And so that include animals like the squid, octopus, opihi, uh, clams, and snails. Snails. So your specialty, your focus is? Hawaiian land snails. Oh, fantastic. So let's talk a little bit more about those Hawaiian land snails. So there are 752 species in Hawaii, um, and guess how many are endemic to the island? Okay, I'm going to guess closer. <laughs> I'm going to guess uh, 749. <laughs> you changed the number from last time. <laughs> So 99.9% of those species are endemic to Hawaii. So they're only found in Hawaii and nowhere else in the world. So once they're extinct, they're gone. I'm sorry. Right. Hawaii has a high rate of endemism, just or having species that are not found anywhere else in the world. So that means that we also have a very high rate of extinction, kind of no, no matter what we do, almost, just because we have that high rate of endemism, right? Well, a little bit of both, but we also have um, a lot of uh, negative impacts. We have habitat destruction, mm -hmm. uh, impacts of um, invasive species, and now we have climate change. So all of that really hits us hard. And we're in the middle of the Pacific, mm -hmm. right? And not a lot of land mass to be running around and escaping, so. Right, but we have over 752 different types of endemic snails, just about, right? Mm -hmm. Or at least Those, three that are in. Yeah. We are, we are indigenous, okay. yes, but they are also endemic to Pacific Islands, so if you go a little bit broader, they're you know, still within the Pacific. And, um, unfortunately, um, mollusks are one of the most endangered group of animals in the entire world. So um, since the 1500s, it is actually um, considered having, having the highest recorded extinctions. Oh, wow. So yeah, more than birds, more than, you know, other reptiles and is there and a so, reason for mollusks being the hardest hit? Well, they are a lot of times um, only found in one particular habitat. They don't move around. They don't disperse very well like birds. Mm -hmm. um, so once they're there, they um, they are called passive dispersers. Once they get there, they just stay there. Okay. And so once that habitat or any um, threats that you know kind of occur in that area, that's why they get wiped out. Um, and they're very sensitive to um, um, a lot of change also, so that's, that's another reason. Um, and then unfortunately, um, within the mollusk, um, terrestrial snails are um, the worst off. And of the terrestrial snails, the ones on Pacific Islands has the highest extinction. So that's why it makes um, a lot of our work uh, very important to be conserving what is left of Pacific Island snails. Okay, and how, how do we assess the situation with these different species? How, what's, what's a tool that you guys use, or how do you assess how many of them are left, if um, there are any left? So the first thing is to do a lot of field survey work. Mm -hmm. You have to be going out into the forest um, areas and to be serving for them to see what is left. And it's very hard because um, the majority of our land snails, guess how large they are? I'm gonna guess they're pretty tiny. Yes, they're very yeah. tiny. The majority of them are less than a centimeter. So I have um, some thick, um, some shells. I know it's going to be kind of hard to see, but you can raise it up here. So we have some of these larger ones, but the majority are these really tiny ones. So they're about three or four millimeters, about the size of a rice grain. Oh my gosh. But if you image them when they're live like this, they're actually really, really cute. Well, I, and well, I think they're cute. Yeah, they're really cute. <laughs> and so a lot of the body color, I mean, a lot of the shell coloration actually comes from the body itself. Yeah, so I, I think they're really cool and very, <laughs> and very cute. And they're very important for our ecosystem too because um, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of invertebrates in general keep our forests healthy. Mm -hmm. um, they are nutrient cyclers. They're basically our garbage men, um, you know, trying to put nutrients back into the um, soil so the plants can be, um, can be using it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, what, a, what about, let's talk about the ones that we're holding here. Yes. So I have this first one here. It's a master day. A master day. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is an endemic family and that is the only extant endemic family in Hawaii. Uh, unfortunately, it's one of the families that are not doing so well. Um, out of 325 species, we only have about, guess how many? Oh gosh. Okay. 20? 
17 left oh out my of gosh. 325. Oh no. Yes. So, so one of the things is to, you know, um, to, to do survey work, but once we are able to find them, um, we have to do um, a lot of intensive identification. So looking at the shells, looking at the internal um, anatomy, mm -hmm. and thank goodness now we have genetics. So now once we can get a genetic reference for them, mm -hmm. um, we can um, use um, their snail slime or other non-invasive uh, techniques to be sampling and to, fig and to figure out what they are. Well, that sounds like a great solution to identifying a lot of different types of snails. Right. So um, how many of the species have been genetically uh, mapped or? Um, we have maybe about 25% with at least one genetic reference. Genetic so we're reference. so we're working on it. Um, but I, as you can see, a lot of these are very very tiny. Yes, right. they're, they're super but, small. Yeah, but hopefully down the road it will definitely help us out. Now you just came <laughs> back. Noreen just came back from Maui actually yes. to do a survey. And what were what were you looking for over there specifically? Um, just snails in general. So we try to uh, go to different hot spots where historically there were a lot of snails. So which is why this uh, collection here is so important. So the Bishop Museum is the repository for all Pacific um, land snails, um, island land snails. But in Hawaii, um, so anytime anyone wants to look for snails and look at references, see their historical distribution, they actually have to visit this collection. So by using this collection, it kind of gives us a reference for areas that we can pinpoint that once had a lot of snails. Mm -hmm. So we went to Makavao Forest Reserve and into another forest reserve on West Maui just to see um, you know, if there are any snails kind of sad. Oh no! Yeah, so there are some species that were seen 5, 10, maybe 15 years ago, no trace of them. Oh no, yes. okay. But uh, fortunately, there were still a handful of species still hanging on and you know trying to survive. A lot of them were in these um, non-native groves of trees, unfortunately, so they weren't doing so hot. Oh. Um, yeah. But the thing is that they are still there, so we still have a chance to conserve and save them. So, so, so what can we do as the public to help and conserve native land snails? Well, for one thing is not to forget about them. Right? <laughs> they're so tiny. Because they're so tiny. <laughs> or, or people will say, oh, they're gross, they're slimy, they're disgusting, they eat my plants. Embrace the slime. Right. No, but the thing is that um, <laughs> our Hawaiian land snails uh, are adapted very well to um, Hawaii. They don't eat native seedlings, they don't eat fresh plants. Like I said, they um, you know they are nutrient cyclers. They they um, break down our leaf litter. Mm -hmm. They're fungivores, so they scrape fungus off the leaves to help plants photosynthesize. So they're very helpful to keep our forests healthy, right? Mm -hmm. So one, 